knows a lot about all kinds of stuff, Professor Dave explains. As we have discussed in other tutorials, the government is constantly working to keep the economy growing. However, economies often unpredictably shrink. While there are booms, there are also busts. We call this a business cycle, or a period of macroeconomic expansion followed by a period of contraction. At times, the business cycle can feel like a roller coaster due to how unpredictable it is. In this tutorial, we will look at what drives business cycles and how economists try to prevent economies from shrinking. When things are going well in life, we often don't seem to notice, and this is also the case with the economy. In fact, we don't have many terms for when things are going right in an economy. Stable, growing, and secure are perhaps three adjectives that could describe a good economy. On the other hand, we have many terms for when things go wrong. Although definitions vary, a recession is an economic contraction that lasts at least six months. In other words, for six consecutive months, even as the population continues to increase, the economy is smaller than it was before. A depression, on the other hand, is a really long and really bad recession. The most famous depression in world history is the Great Depression, which lasted from 1929 to around 1939 and had devastating effects. International trade went down by more than 65%. One third of all banks failed. Unemployment in the United States got as high as 25%, and inflation increased substantially. One of the worst things that can happen in a business cycle is stagflation. Stagflation is a recession combined with inflation, so people are unable to find work or make higher wages while prices continue to steadily rise. Economists first recognized stagflation during the 1970s, when the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, issued an embargo against European and North American countries. This caused the global price of oil to skyrocket, which then led to the increasing costs of other goods and a rise in unemployment. Governments greatly struggle with knowing how to properly respond to stagflation. Economists use many tools in trying to predict business cycles, even though they are very difficult to predict. The leading indicators are a set of important economic variables that yield specific data. While we will go over many of these indicators in a future tutorial, examples include gross domestic product, employment figures, the inflation rate, and consumer spending. In the meantime, let's focus on four main variables economists have identified which drive business cycles. Business investment, interest rates and credit, consumer expectations, and external shocks. If businesses are not investing in their own growth, economies tend to suffer. If they are, economies tend to thrive. If banks make it more difficult to borrow money, economies tend to suffer. If they make it easier to borrow money, economies tend to thrive. Consumer expectations can be the most difficult variable to interpret for economists. While some things are more certain, like knowing that consumers are more likely to buy goods around the holidays, other consumer expectations seem to come out of nowhere. Similarly, an external shock is an unexpected event that dramatically changes an economy. A recent example of an external shock is the COVID-19 pandemic. During the Great Depression, two prominent economists arose who had sharply different views regarding how to interpret and respond to business cycles. Those were Friedrich Hayek and John Maynard Keynes. While both feared the boom and bust cycle, they developed different solutions. Hayek had more of a long-term focus, while Keynes had more of a short-term focus. Hayek feared high inflation more than high unemployment, and generally thought that government regulation of the economy did more harm than good. Hayek believed that markets should be kept free, presuming that consumers are rational and act in their own best interest. In this way, Hayek's views were more in line with Adam Smith, a pioneer in the field of economics who helped develop our current understanding. Most importantly, Hayek believed an economy would be more stable if both production and savings increased. Keynes, on the other hand, wanted governments to be much more proactive in their economies. Keynes feared high unemployment more than high inflation, and generally thought that economic regulation is good. He believed that the economy could be and should be steered by governments. Not only that, he thought private businesses should be assisted by governments during recessions. 
Most importantly, Keynes believed an economy would be more stable if demand increased. He thought fears of both inflation and savings were overrated. Even today, there are two main schools of thought when it comes to business cycles, tracing back to Hayek and Keynes. On Hayek's side, we currently have what's known as supply-side economics, which is based on the idea that the supply of goods drives the economy. On the other side, Keynesian economics argues that it is better to encourage economic growth by increasing aggregate demand. It's worth emphasizing, however, that the predominant school of thought today is the Keynesian perspective. In other words, most economists are more preoccupied with increasing demand and getting consumers to spend their money to keep the business cycle booming. However, as seen by prominent economists like Arthur Laffer, supply-side economics is still influential. And that concludes an introduction to business cycles. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.